famous ferret scout car. Now the ferret dates back to the end of the Second World War and is the direct inheritor of the Daimler scout car, the Daimler armoured car, which were used during the Second World War to great success by the British. It's a lightly armoured vehicle, weighing in at about three tonnes, and it's not technically a fighting vehicle at all. You wouldn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy in a ferret. The idea is that the ferret advances, makes contact visually with the enemy, hopefully without being seen themselves, and then sends back the details that the force commander will need via the rather impressive aerials you can see on the roof of the vehicle. Now there's a two-man crew in the ferret, a driver and a commander. The commander also operates the machine gun you can see there in the little turret. Now that is... And the well, wave to the driver then, he gets a bit lonely there, Wayne. So there he is, look. Excellent, well done. Um, the commander's job is not only to do the reconnaissance, if you will, but also to man that machine gun in there. The 7.62mm general purpose machine gun, or Jimpy as it was known. Now it's really only there for moral support. You really would not expect, as I say, to go toe to toe with the enemy. The ferret is uh, petrol driven, has a Rolls Royce petrol engine, five speed pre selected gearbox, and a transverse lever which effectively turns those five forward gears into five reverse gears. So the ferret can manage about 55 miles an hour going forwards flip the transverse lever and you can manage 55 miles an hour going backwards, which trust me is quite alarming. The driver has a small hatch which you can see behind him so he can scroll around and steer backwards at 55 miles an hour. The reason for that of course is if this ferret comes up against for instance, an enemy main battle tank, imagine that we're in the, 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 the sunken lanes of Dorset and he comes up against an enemy main battle tank, the last thing our guys need to be doing is a three point turn. Whack it into reverse and disappear quickly. One of the most common questions we're asked in the museum is about the little pots you can see on the ferret either side of the headlights. These are smoke dischargers. And the idea is that you would fire a smoke grenade which would explode and create a smoke screen under which you could withdraw. So if our ferret meets the enemy, fire off the smoke grenades, whack it into reverse and disappear at a rate of knots. The Ferret was a very, very successful vehicle and to be honest there's no, there's no real reason it's not still in use. It's perfectly capable of doing the job it was designed to do. They were last used uh, in the Gulf War when the British Army decided to swap from a multi-fuel policy to a single fuel policy. As I said, the Ferret has a Rolls-Royce petrol engine and the British Army now uses exclusively diesel vehicles. And one of the reasons is that diesel is much less flammable than petrol. And if you're in a fighting vehicle, having a less flammable fuel is a useful thing to do. Now this particular vehicle is painted up in what is known as Berlin camouflage. So it's an urban camouflage vehicle. And it reminds us that the ferret was used extensively in uh, civil um, peacekeeping roles it was used. Some of us, I'm sure, will remember the ferrets on the streets of Northern Ireland. Others may remember the ferrets uh, in places like Lebanon. It's been replaced by a fully tracked reconnaissance vehicle, the scimitar. Now, the one advantage the ferret has over the scimitar is that it's relatively quiet, just this as it comes round. Remember how relatively quiet that ferret is and contrast it with some of the other vehicles that will be coming out later on. The scimitar is fully tracked, which gives it rather better cross-country capability. It's almost, almost as fast as the ferret, and it mounts a 30mm Raven cannon, which makes it a bit more fearsome. 